This is Bumper to Bumper, the car show. Drive in anxious and cruise out confident with the best automotive information for your vehicle. And now your hosts, Matt Allen and Dave Riccio. Well, good morning, everyone, and welcome to Bumper to Bumper Radio. I am Dave Riccio here along with Matt Allen, and together we are your KTAR car guys. Heard every Saturday from 11 to noon. At Bumper to Bumper Radio, we're helping you, the motoring public, have a better overall car experience. So the best way to get help from us is if you got questions, give us a call at 602-277-5827, 602-277-KTAR. You can also text us at 411923. And today on the Bumper to Bumper, and don't text where you're driving. And then today on the Bumper to Bumper Roadmap, uh, we're going to be taking phone calls and text. We're also going to be talking to the guys at H&I Automotive. They're grand opening in their new location. New shop. Brand new state-of-the-art facility, which is super beautiful. I know Michael Henry's out there, and I might sneak by there later because they got, they got Waldo's Barbecue. Oh, really? So if you guys don't have anything to do this afternoon and you're anywhere near Higley, and, Higley Road in Gilbert, northwest corner of Higley and Queen Creek, to me, because I'm from South Scottsdale, that's a long way. Oh, it's a hike, yeah. But, hey, if you live out there, it's not a hike. But, man, i tell you what, what a beautiful facility they built. Oh, man. There. Holy it, smokes. It is awesome. they got all kinds of uh, games, pizza, and entertainment, that kind of stuff. So if you don't have anything going on, go see them. Go have some Waldo's barbecue. So we'll be doing that and, of course, taking phone calls and texts uh, to try and help you out. And, Matt, you know, we had an email this week at bumper to bumper radiocom and it was a gal that had a, let me see, Toyota RAV4, I think if I read this right, roughly 45,000 miles on it. And what was she asking you? Well, she says, I have a, a RAV4 with 45,000 miles on it. She took it to the dealership for routine maintenance, and it needs um, you know, $600 maintenance repair of a CV boot or an axle boot that's leaking some grease. Mm. So, you know, so what I... I don't want to steal your thunder, Dave. Maybe there isn't any thunder. No, there's right? no thunder. Go no ahead. lightning, no thunder. But So it's routine maintenance. I mean, that happens to all of us. Every single shop, when we do a maintenance on a car, we see other things that are wrong, and we have to we have to communicate those things to people. But, Dave, I think our, our topic was kind of overzealous mm. on repair. And, gosh, I mean, you always say it. You could ask 10 mechanics in this question. You'll get seven answers, and three of them are wrong. <laughs> three of them are right. <laughs> three of them are right. <laughs> three of them are right. Whatever, whatever the math is. I, well, as soon I, as I as know. soon as you said this to me, uh, you know, I just rolled my eyes. You know, yeah. and uh, it very well could be leaking some amazing amount of grease. It would be an oddity that I wouldn't expect to see. So one of the things here I want to talk about is what are the expectations that our listeners can count on when something. I'm glad this lady sent an email because it does feel overzealous to me. I don't see those, uh, you know, a leak around a CV boot, you know, put a rag on there, wipe it off, and, and these don't leak like, it's not going to leak down on the ground. This is a rubber boot. that It's got grease on the inside designed to lubricate the joint. The boot keeps the grease in, and there's clamps at either end of it. Sometimes you can just cut a clamp off and put a new clamp on. At 45,000 miles, that boot's got a lot of life in it. Well, and think about it, though. This boot is spinning. I mean, as fast as the wheels are spinning, this boot. So you got centrifugal force that's just – and we're talking about a boot. Make make your fist. That's the size of the boot, the rubber going over there in accordion-shaped deal. So it's slinging. I mean, it's trying to throw that grease out. And so it's leaking a little bit of grease, and so what? Mm -hmm. I mean – it's going to seep a little bit. I mean, at what point? And, and what, so my answer to her was her instinct was probably right. She ought to get a second opinion. It's not a breakdown item for sure. The price seemed to be appropriate. I, I Assuming they were probably going to replace an axle. Mm. Um, the price is appropriate. I begin to wonder, wonder, though, if that wasn't under the Toyota powertrain warranty. Hmm. Being, being a, a CV axle. But I think part of the things we've talked about, Dave, is is communicating. That's where I would be at the shop and say, show me. I want to see it on my car. Take me out. Help me understand this. Because I, I think it's a little overboard. Now, there was another question she had, too, is they also say I need brake fluid. And we've talked about the brake fluid. My answer on the brake fluid was yes. It typically needs to be done about 30,000 miles. We do it then or in conjunction with a brake service. 
But there is a test. We can actually do an objective test to say, yes, your fluid's good or no, your fluid's not good. I have never seen a car break down from brake fluid, though. <laughs> well, I'm gonna. I'm, gonna I'm not saying about, but I'm not saying you should only fix your car because it's going to break down. You do want to do preventive maintenance, but it's just a little over the top, I thought. Well, so let me challenge what you say a little bit. Just ask questions, and I can ask questions of people, and, and I don't know what a snake oil salesman looks like. <clears throat> I mean, I have no idea. So I'm a consumer. Oh, he looks like no. I was gonna say you have a mirror, right? <laughs> <laughs> and and so. I'm a consumer, and, I, and I, I do ask questions, and some, you know, some sales guy, you know, makes me feel better about it. But, you know, it's still – so the question I, – I get the – you know, ask questions. Now, if they go put their eyeballs on it, are they going to look at that and go, gosh, that seems superficial? And I guess that's the word here because we're – in my mind, I'm picturing that little bit, of, little bit of grease that develops around the end of the boot that's superficial. That's a great word for it. You just kind of wipe it off with a rag and send it on down the road because there's nothing wrong there. Right, exactly. It's just part of – your shoes are going to get a scuff on them after you've had them for a few days. Are you going to throw them away? No, they're still good wipe shoes. It off? They're still good shoes. This is, I mean, it, I guess it's tough. We're having a hard time articulating it. It's also tough for the consumer. And you're right. So what? She does go out there or he does go out there. Oh, yeah. Oh, oh. Yeah, yeah, that's bad. Don't want to have that grease there. I guess you don't know what you don't know either. It takes mm-hmm. a lot of perspective. But um, – you know, get people to write it down. I guess tell you uh, it's it's a it's a tough question. I'm sure people leave my shop and your shop all the time, going, "Do I really need that?" Mm-hmm. Yes, I mean, but we always want to be able to quantify it. We can show you, we can explain it. I would tell you if they're. It also talks about their sales approach. If they came to you and said, "Ma'am, you've got these things leaking. We're just you know, it's about six hundred bucks, but we'll wipe them off and take a look at it next time." We do that all the time. Let's monitor. So, well, the thing you said was the price seemed appropriate, and, and I'd, if she did not need an axle, in fact, the price seemed appropriate. But in reality, without pulling the axle out of the car, you could re, reclamp that, and we're talking about a, you know, $75 repair. $75 repair. Okay. Yeah, yeah, we do do that oftentimes, and that's what I told her in an email. Sometimes we reband them or put new clamps on there, and it's not – this isn't your hose clamp. You go – Buy at Home Depot or, or AutoZone or whatever, and you know, tighten up a hose with it. It's a special kind of clamp. But yeah, you can do that. So there's other repairs that are effective. But what are you going to do? You're going to put you're going to put a new ax, six hundred dollar axle in your car every forty five thousand miles. You could replace not replace that axle. It'll probably still have only slightly more grease on it than it does today in forty five thousand miles, and still be working fine. Because again, Correct. what you said, Dave, it's not even a high failure rate axle. No, I don't. I don't see those things bad ever. You know, I mean, yeah, with 150 thousand miles on it. So her instincts were right. So you know, something didn't smell right. And sometimes that's what people have to go off of. They just, just got your just, gut. And you know what? You know, go ahead and take a picture of that for me, and you know, I'll, I'll comb it over and marinate on that for a little bit because there's nothing urgent there. Yeah, you know what? What a lot of people are out there driving around right now. I could picture some people who have been driving for a while, more you know, our age, Dave. The CV not as old as you. I, well, I guess yeah, I got ten years <laughs> on you a little bit. But you were around when the CV boy boots. It wasn't. We used to put boots all on cars the all the time. It was one hundred seventy-five dollars or whatever. It was quick, totally easy work, and it needed it because what would happen that the outer CV boot oftentimes goes bad because the boot, the the rubber technology is so much better now. The boots last. But, you know, we said that axle is always spinning. Well, you take the outer joint, not only is it always spinning, but every time you turn the wheel right and left, it's rotating and turning and also up and down. So there's a lot of movement happening in that joint. Well, the boots would go bad, get a rip in it, and then fling and empty all the grease out. If you didn't catch it in time, then you would have a car going, you know, clicking when you turn. But those aren't – we're not seeing those types of repairs on on, on axles lately. And that's – that's. I mean, the the – Auto repair has changed so much. Remember spark plugs? I mean, you put them in there every 15, every 30,000 miles. That was regular deal. And now, you know, 100,000 100, miles. Twenty we're seeing on some. CV boot repairs have gone away. Uh-huh. I mean, really. A lot of times when we're doing transmissions, we have to remove the axle shafts to get the transmission out. And then we inspect them more on their, they're on the ground. And more times than that, we're throwing new boots on them and new mm-hmm. clamps because the, the joints are still good, but they're kind of, well, they're getting kind of dry rotted or whatever it may be. But... 
You know, so that's changed a lot. The spark plug thing has changed a lot. Well, and there's some cars, you know, it's, it's funny. We, I actually have a customer with a Hyundai. She's on the fence whether she wants to replace her car. She's got some valve cover gas that leaks. And one of the things that she needed, we made her an estimate for new axles. They're bad. Uh, I'm not sure if they're a vibration issue or torn boots, but I told her, if, if that's what you're trying to use to decide whether or not you want to keep your car, forget about it. It doesn't need axles that bad. I mean, mm -hmm. that's, now this is a 45,000-mile car, this first one we're talking about. You want to keep that one up. But th this is not decision time on, on, this, uh, on this Hyundai because it, it's not going to make the car break down. But we – we also priced it out, okay, it needs axles. Let's see about just putting boots on. Well, the more of my story here is you can pay the labor and get new boots. Why pay the labor and get two new boots when you can buy the product, have a new axle with new boots, and it's oftentimes about the same price. But it doesn't matter if you have a CV boot question or any kind of question, 602-277-5827, 602-277-KTAR is how you get a hold of the show. So talked about axle boots we're talking about repairs we're talking about communicating with your with your shop now's the time to get in and get on the phone again at 602-277-5827 you can text us at 411-923 and we'll be here for you when you get back matt and i share car repair tips weekly to help you keep your car safely on the road and a few of them are easy to do Yep, you're right, Dave. And one of the easiest is to have a dependable battery that you can trust to get you started no matter what the conditions. Interstate batteries are what we trust at Bumper to Bumper Radio. In fact, they're what we use at our own shops for our customers. If you're like most people, your car is one of your most valuable investments. Make sure you take care of that investment with the power necessary to get you where you need to be. Interstate batteries are America's number one replacement brand with a factory fresh guarantee and they're easy to find at good shops everywhere. Cars or trucks, Interstate has you covered with long life and performance in our harsh desert climates with products like Megatron Plus. It carries a 30-month free replacement and a six-year performance guarantee. Interstate Batteries, no battery lasts longer. Check them out at interstatebatteries.com. Trust, it's hard to earn and sometimes even harder to find. If you live or work in downtown Phoenix, Matt Allen's Virginia Auto Service is celebrating over 20 years of award-winning service at the corner of 7th Street and Virginia. Recognized as one of the best service shops in the country, their customers have come to trust Virginia Auto Service for its A-plus rating by the BBB, two-year, 24,000-mile warranties, and free transportation to and from your home or office. 20-plus years of earning your trust. Virginia Auto Service. They're serious about service. <laughs> It sounds like they've just had the accurate automotive experience. We're family-owned and operated and have served the Mesa, Tempe, Gilbert communities for over 22 years. We focus on building long-lasting relationships and, oh yeah, listening to you so that we can understand, meet, and exceed your expectations. One location, 14 bays, 88 years of automotive expertise, and a passionate commitment to customer service and excellence. My name is Lee Weatherby, and I approve this message because it's true. We love what we do, and we want to do it for you. Accurate Automotive, the home of friends serving friends. Get breaking news and your favorite KTAR News personalities on your time with the KTAR News app. Stream us live or get podcasts on demand. On demand. Download the KTAR News app for Android or iPhone now. Live streaming audio on the KTAR News app is presented by Sanderson Ford. Welcome back to Bumper to Bumper Radio. I am Dave Riccio, here along with Matt Allen, and today we're helping you fix your car at 602-277-5827, 602-277-KTAR. Whether you've got questions about, yeah, maybe you were in a shop and they, they gave you a shopping list of things, and, and maybe it felt a little heavy-handed or overzealous, and you're like, do I really need all this stuff? You know, give us a call. We'll talk through it with you, and we'll help you because we got, you know, we got no dog in a fight. Maybe we can be your, we're kind of your third party, or maybe you're, you know, we're not looking at the car, but we sort of have. It's a like, feel. what's the de definition of is is? Does it need it? Right. I mean that that's a big. 
you know, I've had customers, Dave, where we've recommended work to them. And, and again, that's we always go back to have the conversation. God, I know I get long-winded sometimes on the phone with customers at the shop. They're probably like, would you just shut up? No, I feel like but, that. <laughs> but I want you to understand what I'm trying to tell you you need. If I'm taking your money, if I'm buying something from you, the last thing I ever want is someone to question well, did I need that or, or or not feel confident with what with what they're purchased? I don't want any any buyer's remorse. But you know, I, I had a one a guy one time we mentioned something about control arm bushings, and they're expensive. They can get really mm-hmm. pricey in a car. And it's like, man, I'm out shopping. You know, I just don't want to have to do those control arm bushings. I'm gonna get out of this car now. I'm like, whoa, <laughs> whoa, whoa, time out. It, it doesn't. I mean, don't get rid of the car. Heck, this I've seen cars with control arms bushings forty times worse than this driving around town, eating tires up, and they're still going. You got years left in this car. Don't don't, right, right. don't bail. He'll pump the brakes a little bit. Yeah, so, slow down. So you know, on the on the need meter, yeah, he needed them, but it was really really low on the need meter. So don't make knee jerk reactions off of well, off of uh, that's the one thing too. Too Matt, we were talking about what kind of things are people overzealous on repairing, and we were talking about leaks. And uh, leaks is a good one to, to ask questions about. So we rate our leaks on a scale of one to five, you know, five being worse, kind of like a hurricane. And so someone's got a leak, you know, it's it's a level two. It's not actually active. It's not dripping on the ground. It's just starting to f- form some wetness around a seal or a gasket. And so we want to wash it and keep an eye on it. You know, we'll kind of let you know about that. Some people say, man, I don't want any leaks or none of that. Just fix it. You know, and there's a lot of people, you know what, um, we're not going to worry about it. We'll just watch it, you know. And so sometimes leaks need to be monitored as opposed to it may be a level two leak for the next three years and never hit the ground. Well, yeah, exactly. At what point? So that's, I mean, we a lot of leak stuff, it's for our own interest. We make notes on the ticket. We're going to put monitor. But I'll tell you what, Dave, we didn't we didn't talk about this in our little, little bit of show prep that we did today. Owner's mm-hmm. manuals. How many owner's manuals are overzealous? Usually we're saying and you know, I don't think you know where I'm going with this, but mm-hmm. usually we're saying, oh, cut that coolant flush from 100,000 to 60. There's no way it should go 100. Or take that transmission fluid that's a lifetime. We need to mm-hmm. do it at 50,000. I guess I can say it, Lexus. You'll go look at the Lexus service manual, and they have premium service. Those are the people that really, really want to take good care of their car. They're saying replace the belt at 30,000 miles. I wouldn't do it. I think that's overly aggressive. Have you ever seen a belt bad at 30,000 miles no, on a car? No. No, we're not saying we want to wait till the belt is bad to change it, but holy smokes, that's maybe not even the, had the half the life. Maybe back in the 80s I might have. Yeah, 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 for yeah, sure. yeah. But the you modern car, have. no, you no, 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 no. Yeah, no. you would have, so. For yeah. sure. Well, we've got Carl and Brian. Robert just came in, and then we're going to go with Jim. He's got a 2005 Volvo S80. How can we help you, Jim? You are on Bumper to Bumper Radio. Hey, good morning, guys. Love your show. Love your advice. And you help me love my car. Hey, um, I got a 2005, as you said. And on the left side, the front, when I hit a bump, it'll make a real, like a banging noise. Um, I've lifted it up. I've checked the everything I could on the car. I don't see anything loose or, you know, leaking or, you know, anywhere. And I'm just kind of fig- trying to figure out what, is causing that um, just over a you know like a little bump you know, it'll make a big thumping sound. How many, mi- that... how many miles are in this car? Uh, it's about one hundred and twenty-five thousand. Right. So I mean, for my daughter, and you're going over bumps like coming in out of your driveway or, or cruising through an intersection. Maybe you get a little bit of rough road and it, you know, yeah, that's it. Going cruising down the road, you hit a little little bump in the road and it just makes a. A weird noise on the front left. Yeah, I mean, if I would think I'm, I'm guessing Dave probably you probably some kind of strut mount or suspension yeah. thing in the corner there. You might hear that kind of up high, wouldn't you think, Dave? That strut mount's on the very top. Yeah, I would say <clears throat> strut mount is you know up there, and sometimes just having a bad strut. You yeah. know, it could be a bad strut literally doing that, where you may not you may not see anything, but you know we had a strut noise this week in our shop. And, uh, and it was a CRV, and the, the guy had recently put those uh, those quick struts where everything came together. Mm-hmm. And so they were on the car, and that thing was not put together right. And so we found loose nuts. Uh, you know, I was actually on the left front of his car. One of the nuts was loose, and so we recranked that. We went to the other side, and it wasn't, wasn't making noise yet, but it was loose. And struts are not a job that most people want to tackle at home. It's, uh, it's a can be deal. dangerous. 
That thing and always it needs to be done right. I mean, they're dangerous in a lot of ways. The strut assembly, making sure the car is properly jacked up and secured and has jack stands and in those those types of things. So yeah, I think it's strut mounts and then sway bar, sway bar sometimes, and you know, control arm bushings. And there's a there's a lot of stuff in there that could could be making that noise. Mm-hmm. But well, I think based off a of description, pretty safe bet on our diagnostic. Uh, for spinning, sure, spinning gas wheel. <laughs> let's go with let's go with Tom on a 2004 Chevy Tahoe. How can we help you, Tom? You're on bumper to bumper radio. Yeah, I've got a 2004 Chevy Tahoe. It's got uh, they say it's got 290,000 miles on it. It runs like a top. But uh, I'm getting a check engine light, and it's coming down as a knock sensor. And I've taken it into my into my mechanic, who is an R Pro mechanic, and they don't really know what's going on. I'm wondering, you know, it's it's an older vehicle. I don't know if I want to put, you know, fifteen hundred, two thousand dollars into getting it fixed. Is there any short term, uh, you know, if it, is it going to hurt it having the knock sensor in an alarm? Well, I mean, what you could do is just the cheapest fix for that. What I found is just black duct tape or electrical tape. Yeah, right over the right, yeah, over, right the over the light. light. But no, I don't. <clears throat> it really isn't going to trim. It's a pretty common issue with those. You know, they get moisture down in those knock sensors and they corrode out, and the connection gets bad. Let me back that up just a little bit, Dave. Huh. Most a lot of people don't know what a knock sensor is. Oh, okay. So, I mean, your car. There's hundreds of things that can cause the check engine light to come on, and and the light comes on when the computer detects a malfunction. Well, the knock sensor listens for pinging in, pinging in the engine. That produces high emissions. So the computer wants to listen for those knock noises, and the sensor will hear those and then turn on the check engine light. And, Dave, I'll leave you with no time. <laughs> yeah, no, for sure. I don't know. I mean, if the check engine light's on, it's not going to go through emissions. I, I don't. I haven't priced one of the out lately to know how much of a repair that is. You know, I think there's a couple knock sensors after the intake. Yeah, and then the other thing that we see with them, people wash the their engine too much, That's what get I was water in there, and then they corrode the connection. So you might just need to have the thing cleaned up a little bit. But you're going to spend a little bit of money, but you just said the car runs like a top. Why are you throwing it out? 290,000 miles, barely broken. And it's funny, Matt, you said earlier, you talk to somebody, you're like, oh, I'll just get another car. People so often take a you know, a $500 problem and they fix it with forty grand. So anyhow, when we come back... We're going to be talking to the guys out at H&I Auto, and we're going to be taking your phone calls at 602-277-5827. There is nothing more important than family. Hi, Kurt Rock here for Kurt's Auto Repair. I brought my nephew and general manager, Jeff Rock, to help spread the word. Thanks, Pops. Yep, the more things change, the more they stay the same at Kurt's. Family owned and operated, our ASE Master Techs and Family Ethics have earned us a perfect Better Business Bureau record for over 30 years just east of I-17 at 22nd Avenue and Bell or online at mycarhurts.com. Gas or diesel, foreign or domestic, if your car hurts, take it to Kurtz. Having an accident is stressful. Dealing with a repair process shouldn't be. Hi, Leo Petrozella for Campus Body Salon. The right to choose a repair facility is yours, not the insurance companies. We work with all insurance companies, but we work for you. Campus Body Salon, bumper-to-bumper radio approved and independently family-owned and operated since 1973. Check out our Cash for Your Crash program where we pay you 10% off of your repair up to $1,000. Campus Body Salon, the best care in collision repair. Hi, I'm Dave Riccio, owner of Tri-City Transmission. Well, you may have come to know us for being a transmission expert. What you may not know is that our customers regularly ask us why we don't perform repairs to the rest of the vehicle. You guys are so great. Why work on just the transmission? Well, the request became hard to ignore, and three years ago, we began to build an infrastructure to perform general automotive repair. We weren't going to do general repair if we couldn't be great at it. So in 2013, we began the soft opening of Tri-City Auto Repair on Smith Road. We brought on ASC Master Technicians to work side-by-side with our Master Transmission Technicians. The combination of the best in both of these trades has created a synergy that allows us not only to fix your transmission, but to service and repair your whole car and to do it well. Let's face it, the modern car has become so integrated. We believe all of our expert knowledge puts us ahead of the curve. Find us at tricitytransmission.com or tempeautorepairshop.com. That's tempeautorepairshop.com. 
KTAR.com. Get breaking news and your favorite KTAR news personalities on your time with the KTAR News app. Stream us live or get podcasts on demand. On demand. Download the KTAR News app for Android or iPhone now. Live streaming audio on the KTAR News app is presented by Sanderson Ford. Breaking news is always first. Always first. Arizona's news station, KTAR News, now. KTAR News time is 1130. Good morning, I'm Mark Carlson. Protests are expected to continue today over the recent killing of an unarmed black man in Sacramento. Calls for justice and charges against two police officers intensified after an autopsy showed Stefan Clark was shot in the back. Contrary to police claims, he was approaching officers. Another rally is planned for this afternoon, just hours before a Sacramento Kings-Golden State Warriors game. A winning ticket for the Mega Millions jackpot, estimated at $521 million, has been sold in New Jersey. Lottery officials say no one has come forward yet. It's the nation's 10th largest lottery jackpot played in 44 states. Someone just hit the jackpot. First number. Matching the numbers in Friday's Mega Millions drawing worth more than $500 million. This is the fourth highest ever Mega Millions jackpot. Mega Millions lead director Gordon Medanica says no one has matched all six numbers since January. The New Jersey Lottery tweeting the winning ticket was sold at a Luke Oil gas station in Morris County, 30 miles outside New York City. The question is, who won? Medanica's advice? Sign that ticket because uh, as, as odd as it sounds, that little piece of paper has just become a half billion dollar bill. Michelle Franzen, ABC News. And now let's check traffic. Here's Mike Daniels in the KTAR Traffic Center. Well, thank you, Mark. Slower in that crash off right, Loop 101 westbound at 7th Avenue. And on 10 westbound at 43rd Avenue, crash blocking his shoulder. Heavy backup in the area. This report brought to you by ASU. ASU's Thunderbird School of Global Management offers a degree of adventure. Learn more about Thunderbird's April 7th preview day at thunderbirdpreview.com. I'm Mike Daniels, KTAR News. KTAR weather for the valley today, partly cloudy and warm, a high about 92. We have 84 degrees currently in Phoenix. Weather is brought to you by Howard Air. I'm Mark Carlson on Arizona's news station, KTAR News. Get breaking news and your favorite KTAR news personalities on your time with the KTAR News app. Stream us live or get podcasts on demand. On demand. Download the KTAR News app for Android or iPhone now. Live streaming audio on the KTAR News app is presented by Sanderson Ford. It sounds like they've just had the accurate automotive experience. We're family owned and operated and have served the Mesa, Tempe, Gilbert communities for over 22 years. We focus on building long lasting relationships and oh yeah, listening to you so that we can understand, meet and exceed your expectations. One location, 14 bays, 88 years of automotive expertise and a passionate commitment to customer service and excellence. My name is Lee Weatherby and I approve this message because it's true. We love what we do and we want to do it for you. Accurate Automotive, the home of friends serving friends. Grand Canyon University proudly unveils its newly remodeled championship golf course right in the heart of Phoenix. Masterfully redesigned by the renowned architect John Fott, the GCU golf course is a plush oasis of fairways, beautiful greens, and mature trees. The brand new 22,000 square foot clubhouse features a restaurant and bar, fully equipped pro shop, and luxury event space. Come and experience a championship golf course with affordable rates. Visit gcugolf.com to book your tee times. Here's what Carrie from Tempe had to say about her experience with Good Works Auto Repair. As soon as you realize, I need to get some work done on my car, I'm sure the thought occurs to you that you're about to get taken for a ride. I used to share the same sentiment and wondered if the shop was going to make something up and have me spending hundreds of dollars instead of 30 I was planning on for a simple oil change. This is one of the reasons I will only go to Good Works Auto Repair. Because I trust them. Putting trust in an auto shop didn't come easily. It's been built over several visits with them doing exactly what was needed, not coercing me into unnecessary work. Ask them for an oil change and a safety inspection, they do just that. No baloney, list of filters, belts, and whatchamacallits that need replacing on my new car. Thank you, Goodworks Auto Repair, for being there for me when I need you. Appreciate the kind words. It's always a pleasure. Glenn Hayward here. Come experience what award-winning auto service should be. Goodworks Auto Repair in Tempe, or visit us at goodworksautorepair.com. Uh, 
You can. How can you not feel good when this song is playing? I thought you were going to howl a little bit, Dave. Yeah. I'm feeling a little crazy over here. <laughs> anyway, welcome back Don't to get Bum- all wild on this, Dave. <laughs> welcome back to Bumper to Bumper Radio. I'm Dave Riccio here along with Matt Allen, and we are helping you with your car. It's 602-277-5827. And if you haven't tuned into the show before and you're wondering, what the heck is this Bumper to Bumper Radio thing about? Let me tell you about it. Bumper to Bumper Radio is a show designed to give you some basic expectations for auto repair, what you can expect, relieve the anxiety that you might feel when you go, oh, that little yellow light turned on again. We want you to feel comfortable with that, not like hit the panic button. We want you to help help you plan and budget for car repair. Maybe you just want to talk to us about what kind of car you want to buy. So that's one piece of Bumper to Bumper Radio. The other piece of Bumper to Bumper Radio is our network. If you go to bumper to bumper radio.com, there is lists of shops that Matt and I feel 100% confident in, and we send you there with a referral, carte blanche. Just go down there. They'll take care of you. And these are shops that are going to treat you like family and uh, shops that you can have a relationship with, feel comfortable with, and that's going to help relieve the anxiety. So how do you become a shop at bumper to bumper radiocom Well, we have a brand-new shop that actually has two things going on today. We've got H&I Automotive, and they've been around for a decade, and, and uh, they've built a, a great business on word of mouth, and they've expanded into their second location, which is really cool. And today they're having a grand opening, and that's out at, you know, Matt, I don't know that side of town very well. I've been to the shop. It's a beautiful shop. But I'll tell you what, we've got Michael Henry on the line uh, who helps. He's part of the bumper to bumper team. Hey, Mike, how's it going out there today? What's up, Dave? Matt, how are you? Good morning. You were awfully quiet there. I went to go connect you, and I thought, he's already connected. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, yeah, kudos to Kerry. I didn't even get the lead in. He was doing the celebration music. That a boy. That a boy, Kerry. Oh, yeah. well, it all came together now. I'm a little slow. There. Celebrations, little... Michael's favorite word. I know. Yeah, I know man. I said, well, it is. It's, I feel like I just every time I call in, I'm like the people who listen to the show. They're like, oh, he, he must be like the party guy, and I am the party guy because I'm out of the party today at H and I. And it's actually we had a we had to pull into the, the the office because outside you would have never heard us. They really did it up right. They're having a big party, and it is H and I Automotive, and it's H and I, and that stands for Honesty and Integrity. And Dave, you've been out here already and met the guys, and we're so happy because it's. Their grand opening on the second store, and it's flipping state of the art. I mean, it's just just shocking when you walk in there. I was so surprised how nice this facility is. But this is their second location. They have another location in Mesa, and I'm here with the owners, uh, Paul Garcia, Danny Grant, and of course Spencer Doucet. And Spencer, I'm going to put him on here in a second to actually talk about what's going on out here. But holy cow, you guys! There's Waldo's barbecue out here. There's hot rods. There's I mean, there's so much stuff going on out here. I was just shocked. But, you know, then I looked at what Spencer's done in the shop. And I'm like, ah, leave it to Spencer. I mean, they did it right. So it's a big party. Uh, I'm going to do a handoff to let you guys talk a little bit about the details. But come on out. It's 10 to 3. And, you know, it's a party. So I had to come with party gifts. So even the station and I kind of grabbed some tickets for D-backs uh, game on, uh, I think it's the 14th of May to the Mets. And, I mean, there's so much stuff that Spencer's doing out here. So without further ado, I'm going to introduce you to Spencer and let you guys rap a little bit. And uh, for everyone listening, come on out because 10 to 3, it is unbelievable party happening out here at H&I, and we're so glad to have them. Here you go. Here's Spencer. Hey, Spencer, man. I'm excited for you. That sounds like real cool stuff you got going on out there. Are you surprised by the turnout? Oh, it's a great turnout. Definitely surprised by the turnout. Yeah. It's... Uh, we, we got we probably got 30 cars, show cars that uh, Tons of people out here right now, uh, re- really having a good time. Well, what's really what's really cool, and uh, you know, uh, we get inquiries from people that want to be a part of Bumper to Bumper Radio, and you know, I go out and I meet them, or Matt will go out and meet them. I know Michael goes out and meets them, and uh, and not everybody can be a Bumper to Bumper shop just because it's it's a different. Maybe we have some different chemistry, and it's not really a fit. But I'll tell you what, what was the coolest thing? You know, I've been out and met with Spencer a couple times in the last two three weeks. And, Spencer, I'm just impressed by the way you do business. And, uh, you know, I want to make a point of that. I know you're having a grand opening. There's other stuff to talk about. 
but it was very like-minded uh, as far as how you approach customers and take care of their cars. In your first location, you know, you just kind of, you know, that started 10 years ago, I think roughly you told me, and you just built that on word of mouth. People said, oh, man, go see my buddy Spencer. He'll do a good job for you. And then that just became into a thriving, you know, auto repair location. So this is your second location and really an expansion, and I'm really excited. You're in a great neighborhood to see that thing see that thing grow. And, uh, yeah, so uh, what what all do you got going out there today? Uh, what do we got? We got uh, we got Waldo's Barbecue. They came out to cater. Uh, we got we had an Easter egg hunt for the for the children. Is it too my, late? My Snap On guy came out to support and give away some free swag. Sweet. And then bet, we're we're, right, we're doing a, a huge raffle. Uh, you know, thanks to your station, we got a pair of Diamondback tickets. But we're doing uh, five hundred dollars, two hundred fifty dollars to the shop. All my vendors jumped in. We're we're doing uh, we're giving away you know transmission flush, coolant flush. Fuel injection service. We got some gift cards, uh, car wash kit. My my brother's company, H and I Detailing, is throwing in some uh, free details. So we're we're raffling all that off this afternoon. Uh, we got some free brake jobs we're giving away. I mean, you you name it, we're giving it away today. Well, it sounds like you know there's everything to be had out there. Give the customers maybe you know someone who hasn't been there and is yet to be a customer can win something and, and really get a taste of of what it's like for your service and i and i i haven't been out to the facility yet but i saw some pictures and man i bet the snap-on guy was there i think he likes you a lot <laughs> <laughs> a lot a lot of nice equipment in there and you're really going to be able to uh to to service that area you know i'm looking at the map here queen creek just a little bit north of higley i mean how many people are out there in the Lowe's parking lot, which is just a little bit south of you? There's all kinds of, of stuff out there. So we wish you wish you much success out there based on the, the reputation. Yeah, of, we're, of the we're, on that, we're on that northwest corner of uh, Queen Creek and Higley. Mm-hmm. Uh, if, you, if you're heading south on Higley, we got, we got balloons up. It's real easy to find us. For sure. Well, I'm, congratulations, uh, Spencer, and uh, we are excited to have you aboard on Bumper to Bumper Radio. See, for, for Matt and I, it's really nice when when uh, we've got uh, quality shops that we can refer people to because that it makes me look good. Well, yeah. <laughs> In the I mean, day. It just, it's... <laughs> and, and, and I was so, I mean, when I went out to Spencer's shop and took a look and took a tour, and I'm like, hmm. We, like we could be brothers from another mother or something because right. well, it, it, it just, just fit the same philosophies. You know, it was like you had your I had John in, you know, a couple of weeks ago when I was out of town and I was listening to the show while I was traveling. God, he just his process. We think a lot alike, you know. And we saw there was a comment on one of the Facebook things or an email or some you know the cynical people. Oh, yeah, you can all you got to do is write the check to be part of the network. No, mm-hmm. no, I, I don't need your money. Right. Yeah, um, no, we're looking. It, it's not. Uh, if I'm going to say go here, I better make sure that mm-hmm. you, know, you can go there. Yeah, and there's been. I take it serious. There's been places we couldn't say that. Yes. You know, so anyhow. Well, good luck with that, Spencer and Dan. And then Steve is one of his service writers that listens to our show. So uh, big old shout out to Steve for sure. Let's go with, uh, looks like Tammy. She's got a 2007 Jeep Wrangler. How can we help you, Tammy? You're on Bumper to Bumper Radio. Hey, guys, thanks for taking my call. You bet. And your uh, call screener is wonderful. <laughs> All right. And, yeah, he's smiling in there behind the glass. Woo! <laughs> thanks, Dan. And what, i, I got to tell you one thing before I tell you my problem. I live on a four-wheel drive driveway, about eight miles. Mm. And it's big four-wheel drive, so i got to pick my way through the rocks and things. And... Um, so it ne- my vehicle never gets over like 25 miles an hour ever because it has a little other issues on the highway. Mm-hmm. So I park that and get in a highway vehicle to go to work down below. So my problem is a, a light came on. It's a lightning strike with backwards parentheses. And I went to the library, looked that up. It says it's electronic throttle control. Is that right? Interesting, and this is on the 2007 Wrangler. This is—is is this the car that gets on the highway, or is this the car that gets this, on the dirt? Only four wheel drive. Only four wheel drive. This is the car she uses to go time. to her mailbox to get the mail. <laughs> right. All well, the time. Well, four-wheel I mean, drive. if it's no, electronic, except thought, for about two miles, and then 
Sure. It never goes over 25 miles an hour. Well, if it's electronic throttle control, Dave, I mean, that, that's a system. You want to explain it? Well, I was, I mean, I was saying, is this, Tammy, I was going to ask, is this, is this car getting to the shop for regular maintenance or because it has no miles, it's not seeing the shop? It has 80,000 miles. Mm-hmm. Uh, my husband's pretty handy, but I get an oil change every three years, whether it needs it or not. Just kidding. And <laughs> um, I'm, I'm the one that checks the fluid. So if there's something I need to know, I would like to know. Well, the the electronic in the electronic throttle control, and I could just talk about it generically as is the way it works in cars. Is that there's a sensor on your gas pedal. In the old days, there was a throttle cable that went from your gas pedal out to your th- throttle control on the engine, and that's been eliminated. So now there's a sensor on your throttle pedal, and then there's an electric motor at the uh, throttle body, and so those two are talking to each other all the time. But because it's they call that drive-by wire. Because it's one of those things where you don't want your car to go running away. It has some redundant safeties built into it. So they're very quick to notify you if there's an issue. Uh, usually if there's an issue, they go into reduced power mode where the car doesn't go screaming away on you. And so I'm not sure. We didn't have any symptoms. All we had was a light. So and any of the thoughts you had, Matt? Well, just thinking about the way the conditions that the car is driven in. Yeah. I mean, barely off idle. doesn't go over 25 miles an hour. She might not know it. I don't know that that – I'm just trying to think of the Wrangler. You know, we don't replace a lot of those throttle-by-wires. I mean, the GMs where we've done Mm -hmm. some – we've done a handful of pedal assemblies and a couple of throttle bodies on some of the the European imports. But not – I haven't – I don't know if the the Jeeps are – if it's a pattern type of failure. I don't see it. But, man, I'd be (laughs) – that that thing is getting shaken up a lot. That's a lot of – vibrations on wiring harnesses and, and looms and things that are attached that's you know for sure well i don't know <clears throat> i don't know where we gave you a ton of help here tammy but uh it sounds like you need to get that into a good shop to get it diagnosed when we come back we're taking more calls at 602-277-5827 we got gene and tyler standing by we'll be right back having an accident is stressful dealing with the repair process shouldn't be hi Leo Petrozella for Campus Body Salon. We've taken the stress out of collision repair since 1973, and here's a couple of tips to de-stress your repair. Make your own choice. Some insurance companies try to convince you that you must use their approved shop for your repair. Not true. Arizona state law allows you to choose the facility that's right for you. Beware of the cheapest estimate. Typically, it's the one from the insurance company cutting corners to trim costs or focusing on appearance only. At Campus Body Salon, appearance is important, but structural integrity and safety are even more critical. Campus Body Salon, independent, family-owned and operated, and bumper-to-bumper radio approved. Check out our Cash for Your Crash program where we pay you 10% off of your repair up to $1,000. Campus Body Salon, the best care in collision repair. Trust. It's hard to earn and sometimes even harder to find. If you live or work in downtown Phoenix, Matt Allen's Virginia Auto Service is celebrating over 20 years of award-winning service at the corner of 7th Street and Virginia. Recognized as one of the best service shops in the country, their customers have come to trust Virginia Auto Service for its A-plus rating by the BBB, two-year 24,000-mile warranties, and free transportation to and from your home or office. 20-plus years of earning your trust. Virginia Auto Service. They're serious about service. Gas or diesel, foreign or domestic. If your car hurts, take it to Kurtz. That's our closing line, Pops. I know, Jeff. Just reinforcing that we're full service auto repair. At Kurtz Auto Repair, we do it all, including diesel. We have the passion, training, equipment, and expertise for diesel. Our techs are ASE certified for diesel and advanced diesel diagnostics. Toy hauling, horse trailering, off-roading, or work trucking, we've got you covered. Gas or diesel, foreign or domestic, if your car hurts, take it to Kurtz. Check us out at mycarhurts.com. Fix it or forget it. This is the show that will help you decide what to do with your car. Bumper to Bumper Radio. KTAR News on 92.3 FM. Welcome back to the final segment this Saturday of Bumper to Bumper Radio. I am Matt Allen, Dave Riccio sitting here alongside me, and we're helping with the car just like we do every single Saturday from 11 to just about noon o'clock. Noon o'clock? Noon o'clock. 
noon o'clock. So we've got a couple calls, talked about some overzealous repairs earlier in the show and, and what you do when you get that list. It's, I think it's always important just to ask questions. If you're there, show me. Don't tell me, show me. <laughs> yeah, get familiar with your car and get to know your service people. And, and that way when things go haywire or something goes wrong, you're not all freaking out and you can handle it you're prepared for sure so, well we got a couple calls and then we got to bang through some texts here matt let's go with tyler 2004 cadillac dts how can we help you tyler you're on bumper to bumper radio hi um my car when it shifts it takes a, a very long time to it revs up real high and then shifts real hard is is that normal it doesn't sound right no, it doesn't, doesn't sound normal either. Now, what speeds is that happening? Is that happening when you're first leaving the stoplight, when the light turns green, or is it happening at 40 miles an hour or 80 miles an hour? It happens at every speed. I have, you know, it's got that big North, North Star engine in it, and I really expect to be able to jump out in traffic or jump out at the stoplight, and I can't do that anymore. It takes a long time. I have no power, and then it revs way up and then shifts real hard on all the gears, even into overdrive. Okay. Well, on, on transmissions, there's there's transmission problems and there's transmission control problems. That transmission that's in that car is a 4T80. Not that that means anything to you, but to me it's a model number. But, uh, but what could be going on, I mean, it needs to be diagnosed. In other words, sometimes these things go into a fail-safe mode. Or if you've got a, I know they had solenoid problems with those solenoids breaking off of the valve body, and so you'd just be stuck in a third gear type of situation. So it takes off slow, doesn't have the pickup, you know, that kind of stuff. And we're assuming it's a transmission-related problem. There could be something else going on. Just from her description, I was, I was having a hard time, you know, because you usually don't have it at all speeds. You know, when I start hearing all speeds, I start wondering if the engine's running right. Yeah, I was going to say maybe low on fluid. I guess that's where you start, mm -hmm. but I mean, right. But if it's low on fluid, it's never the cure is never just to put more fluid in it. Okay. That fluid had to go somewhere. So yeah, it sounds like a, a diagnostic is in in order. Yeah, for sure. But no, it does not sound normal. So and and also you don't want to take a small problem and make it a big problem because we didn't take care of it. You know, I see that happen so much in the transmission world. You don't want, you know. It could be expensive, you know, and I see people that literally drive with a with a minor few hundred dollar repair. They drive it like that for six months. By the end of six months, they burn their transmission up. Well, they and don't want to go in because they. It's like going to the dentist. Ah, I don't want another drill in my tooth. Well, let's find out if yeah, you need that first. Right, don't sure. don't sell your don't sell yourself short. So, what do you think, Dave? We've got Gene. Uh, he's maybe like a brake fluid question. How can we help you, Gene? You're on bumper to bumper radio. Yeah. Yeah, good afternoon. Or no, it's still morning yet. Um, I I got on the tail end of your conversation about brake fluid. Uh, I was born and raised on a farm, driving in the 50s and 60s, working on tractors and stuff. And you talked about changing brake fluid. Uh, has the viscosity of the brake fluid broke down since then, or wh why are you changing brake fluid? Well, a, a couple reasons. The brake fluid attracts moisture it's hydroscopic so it's naturally it's going to attract moisture and then if you get moisture in the system it can cause rust and, and other things to go wrong also when you get the moisture in the in the system the ability of the fluid to lubricate also goes away and you'll start to wear we test we test brake fluid for moisture but we also test it for copper content and then dave there's another bunch of other reasons too well the other thing too and and i get this because there's sometimes uh I'll get into these discussions with maybe old timers that have done it one way back in the day. You know, if you're working on something from 30 years ago, it didn't have an ABS system in it, uh -huh. okay, which is a very, very expensive component, okay? Now, we talked earlier about changing the spark plugs every 15, every 30,000 miles. We don't do that anymore. Mm -hmm. But, you know, maybe back then, when I was, we never changed brake fluid in shops. You right. know, when I was growing up in shops, it just never happened. But, but things have changed in the modern car. It is a, you know... Speed limit's 75 miles an hour. That means everybody's going 85, okay? You know, back in the day, when I was a kid, it was 55 on the freeway. Right. It was probably 45 when you were a kid. No, I'm not that old. All right. <laughs> you know, but but it's um, it, it's a good question to ask, mm -hmm. though. I yeah, mean, absolutely. I, worked, I was working in Porsche German car facilities in the early 80s. We were changing brake fluid then. 
the Americans are the ones that that came late to the party. I mean, we, you you pull up the open the hood on your seventy eight Buick Regal and you pop the thing off the the cap to check the brake fluid level and it was black fluid. Nobody ever thought anything about it. This just didn't even register. It was it was no big deal. So it's just the evolution of cars. The brake fluid hasn't gotten bad. If anything, it's probably improved. Mm-hmm. And uh, it, it's just the evolution of the car and the introduction of electronics. Higher temperatures, higher you oh, know, yeah. brake temperatures, all that stuff wears on the fluid. So now these cars stop a whole lot better than they did in the old days. Yeah, mm-hmm. big time. so so your sure. 1942 Massey Ferguson probably does not need a brake fluid flush. I don't know what a Massey Ferguson <laughs> is. Tractor, Dave. Okay, well I'm looking here. At, I want to get to a couple of these texts uh, here. Uh, Jesse 04 Mazda V6 tribute uh, valve cover gaskets. Uh, let's see. Say if I just do one side, it'd be 300, but both sides, it's 500. And what I think you're referring to, you got to pull the intake off to get to the back side. A lot, I, hard, a lot more work. I, you know, I do that at the shop. We'll replace one valve cover gasket. Why not? Mm-hmm. Why why take something apart because it's got two? Right. Doesn't doesn't necessarily. If it ain't broke, it. sometimes don't fix it. Yeah. Do you one know? valve cover if you feel like it. Go yeah. for it. Yeah, absolutely. As long as the other one's not going to be 300 when you have to do it. If it's still going to be 200, then... All right, then someone here with a 93 Dodge, 5.9 liter, 5-speed, looking for a Speedo gear in the transmission. Any idea where I might find that part? 93, I'm trying to think, Speedo gear. That's probably a speed sensor. You said it's in the transmission. That's where you'd find it, wouldn't you? Yeah. Yeah, toward toward speed sensors. <laughs> speed sensors or gears are generally toward uh, in the tail housing of the transmission. But if you got questions about that, you know, there's speedometer shops still here in town. I think he knows where it part belongs. He just oh. needs to purchase one. I was okay. being a little bit of a smart aleck. I know. Yeah. And then, <laughs> hey, another one in here, a text message about headlights. I have a, I think it was a Toyota. The gentleman said, or I don't even know if it was a gentleman for that matter. Um, he could be very rude. <laughs> I don't know, but the text message said, should I replace one of my headlights? Why not replace both? A couple things. I mean, logically, you'd think they'd both burn out at exactly the same time, but I guess not. Um, I would only replace one unless you can maybe you want to do an upgrade. Sometimes Sylvania has that brighter pack thing where they're brighter. You want to get LEDs. At least make sure that they're consistent. You don't have one really bright one and one really dull one. But otherwise, no need to replace them as a pair. Yeah, and do you see that? I mean, if it was in your shop and you had someone with one headlight out, you would just recommend one headlight. To yeah. Them. Okay. Unless they want to upgrade and do something with the, the silver bright lights or whatever they call them or do something fancy schmancy. For sure. Well, if you've got any time this afternoon, that thing at uh, H&I Automotive is from 10 o'clock to 3 o'clock, and I bet you there's still some Waldo's Barbecue, Little Caesars Pizza. Easter egg hunt. I was really hoping to get there for that, but I'm not going to make that. But they're giving away an Android tablet so or two, so I might want to do that. So make it out there to H&I Automotive. And if you live anywhere near that and you're looking for a shop that you're going to get a relationship with, H&I Automotive. Uh, I personally tell you they're going to get great service there. Fantastic facility. See you next week.